Today I'm going to be talking about DataPay, how we can build and broadcast data transactions to the Bitcoin SV blockchain with as little as four lines of code. DataPay is a JavaScript development tool implemented by a pseudonymous developer Unwriter. Most people in the Bitcoin SV space know who Unwriter is. For those who don't know, Unwriter is a developer who's built all sorts of tools that really make it super easy for developers to build applications on top of Bitcoin. The goal of this tutorial will just be discussing data pay and how we can quickly start putting data on chain and hopefully motivate developers or new people looking to learn how to code to instantly start interacting with the Bitcoin blockchain. So the tagline here really is it's really this simple where we can write four lines of code in JavaScript and start broadcasting transactions. All the links that I reference I'll put in the description of the video so people can easily reference this stuff when they walk through this on their own. So here it talks about the installation. It, it discusses to do it in Node.js. Node.js is server-side JavaScript. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will not do that as it requires people to download a program, but to eliminate the barrier to entry, we're gonna do this in the browser. And to do so, you would just start by copying this script at the top of your HTML file or your text file. And this just allows us to reference the tool that Unwriter's already built to start sending transactions. So we go down to our quick start section here, and it says we can Put hello from data pay to memo in only five lines. So memo, for those who don't know, was a social media website built on top of Bitcoin Cash. They also support Bitcoin SV, but for the purposes of this, we can just reference this site to easily see our transactions being put on chain without necessarily having to go to a block explorer, but we'll, we will still go to the block explorer. So to talk about how more how memo is relevant, before I get into the syntax of this, we can see in this data piece, it has this weird prefix. So this prefix ensures that it's going to show up on the memo platform. So you can see this here has a blurb about that, builds an op return transaction with hello as push data. That might sound like garbage to someone just getting started. So let me just explain. So op return is the means in which developers have been putting data onto the blockchain. Without going deep into the rabbit hole, op return is a code in Bitcoin script that was intended, originally intended to simply return in the script. So in programming languages, when you, when you return, that halts execution and anything after that is ignored. It turns out, um, Way back in 2010, there was a bug with the op return that forced Satoshi Nakamoto to disable it such that it always returns false. So you can have true in front of it, you can have any value in front of it, but it'll always return false in Bitcoin today. So this has led to people using this as a sort of data dumping ground where we can put op return and then anything after that because it will not be validated and it'll be ignored by the miners. So we could put arbitrary data in the op return, which allows us to, has allowed people to build all kinds of apps on top of Bitcoin SV. So if I go to their protocol page, you can see it talks about the op return, but you'll notice it references this same weird prefix and then a message. We can ignore the string length, on Bitcoin SV, we can put our a limit up to 100 kilobytes, which is way bigger than only 217 um, string length. So we can put a big message in here if we want to. So if we prefix our op return message transaction with this, it'll ensure that it shows up on the memo SV platform. Okay, let's just jump into an example here. So, I have various degrees of complexity for this simple tool, but I'm just gonna walk through this. 
So as I mentioned, we got this script up here at the top, and then I named this data pay demo simple. I'm not going to get too deep into HTML for the scope of this tutorial, but I will put the HTML files out there for people to reference. But the parts that are relevant, so this on submit, I'm going to have a submit button on my web page that calls this broadcast function. So the code inside of here will be called. Now, I know I mentioned only four lines of code, but in this example, I broke some of this stuff out to make it a little bit more robust for a tutorial. So the one drawback of the data pay tool is that it exposes the private key and code. This is fine to me for tutorial purposes and for people to just start playing around. We would just put a small amount of Bitcoin in here and you know, if someone steals it, whatever. I mean, we'll just put you know a few Satoshis in here to get started to be able to start sending the people. All right, but for developers to get started, we're gonna need to get a private key and then fund it. So I'm going to walk through how we can do that. So I'm gonna go to this awesome website called simplecash.live. Again, I'm gonna put all the links in the description of the video. So here we can kind of create gift cards to give to people. So I'm gonna um, put name as data pay demo. And then just data, just tutorial. So what you can do with this is create a URL for yourself that will fund a new private key with the amount of Bitcoin I specify here. So here I already have my money button set up. I'm just going to fund it with a penny. So I'll swipe this and then it gives me this URL. I'll click onto this and you can see I got about 5,800 Satoshis in BSV. So for this, the great thing about this is it gives me this with field, which is synonymous with a private key. So we can take this private key value here, let me zoom in, and then I can paste it into this field. I won't do this since I've already funded my own private key. And for all you scammers out there, I'm going to drain these when I post this video. So don't try to steal the Bitcoins. There won't be anything there. Okay, to walk through this. So, you know, if you are starting out, you would paste that value like I mentioned into here. And we say const private key. The reason we do const in JavaScript is so this is a constant value, meaning it's unchanging. So I can't assign some other value to private key later. I want this always to be the same. And then we'll have our data pay. We're able to use this because we have this script up top, like I talked about before. And then we're gonna call send. This safe. So let's talk about this real quick. So if I find safe on here, they have some, Unwriter has some rhetoric around this. So we want to set this to true. The reason for this is because in the Genesis, up, upcoming Genesis upgrade on Bitcoin SV, it's going to make op return function, as I mentioned, it should have before, where it actually returns a value, not always false. So post-genesis, we're going to have to explicitly say false, then return to get the same functionality. If we just do op return, it's going to return true, which if value is associated with those Bitcoins, they can in theory be spent by anyone. But we don't want to do that. We just want to use best practices for after the upgrade. So we'll just say op false, op return, which means it'll always return false as expected. And then we can just put data after it since it is ignored by the miners. All right, getting back into the code, we have this data part, which is an array with these brackets. So like I went over before, we got our protocol prefix, and then we're going to get our message value and post whatever we type into a field. We got the pay, which is the key, the private key from up here. I'll get into this part later, but let's just see how this works. All right, so I got my data pay demo simple. This correlates to the code that I just showed. So let's just say simple data pay test. So I'm gonna submit and I get a transaction ID alerted to me. I'll copy that and let's go to What's on chain? I'll paste in my transaction ID 
and you can see my text here written in this op return output exactly what I typed in. You see these weird characters here? That's kind of the representation of the memo protocol prefix. So to show that we have this, let me refresh. So this is my profile page for that private key, and you can see this is the same message. All right, and then let me go to the Explorer, and you can see this transaction ID matches the one I have here. So we can see that on two different web pages, we have the same data from where I typed it on my local HTML file, which is you know pretty cool stuff. All right, let me get into an exam advanced example. So if we scroll, go down to here, we can create an object that we can then pass to the database send function instead. This is actually better practice because we can make something that's we can change later with attributes. So here it has the same thing. They're calling it config. So we'll set safe to true. We can set whatever our data is. And in our pay, we get some more variables. So we can say the private key. We can say who to connect to. So in this case, it's choosing an API. We can specify the fee if we want to. And then the two. So two is an array of different addresses and value pairs that we can send to. So this could be as many as we'd like. So in this case, it's only one, but we can send to multiple people with a single click of a button. This is where I think this is really powerful, where we can do micro payments to various parties. But this is better practice. So we want to construct an object and then pass that object to the send function and use that instead of simply writing everything inside the send function. So it does a, Unwriter does a nice job here of explaining what all this stuff does, that it posts the hello from DataPay, 400 Satoshi fee, this private key at that endpoint, and it sends to this address a value of 1,000 Satoshis. So in my example, we can see, for the most part, this is the same, except I changed this to be advanced. So we got the same private key. We're setting it to this constant. But in this case, we're setting a TX object where we construct it. So safe, true, we're going to set the message to the text and then the pay. We didn't implement any of the other ones for this example. But this advanced is just show where we break out the object. And now we call data pay dot send and we pass the TX. You'll notice here I pass a function. So without going down the rabbit hole of JavaScript programming, this is a callback to where I make sure that these two lines in this bracket here, you can see it highlight here in Visual Studio Code, that it will call these after I get a response back. So this res is my response object. I'm just going to log this to the console and then create an alert. So an alert was that pop-up that we saw in the first example. Let's go to the advanced and refresh this. Okay, so now we're going to do advanced test from data pay. I'll click submit and then I get my alert. I'll paste this into what's on chain and we can see advanced test from data pay. If I go to memo, refresh and you can see I got the same message okay I mentioned before we can send to multiple parties so I'll just scroll down here so here's an example so it, it does what exactly as I'm doing it creates a transaction object so TX sets all the same stuff but notice here in the two it has multiple addresses so we have these brackets which delineate an array so we can it's see here that we're, in this example, it's the same address, but we can put different addresses. So address, value of 500 Satoshis, and then another address, and then another value. Um, one thing about value, so there's a dust limit on Bitcoin of about 560 Satoshis. We want to make that more than that because those would be rejected by the miners. This library actually will allocate those towards the fee. I think that's a bug, but 
don't make a value less than 560, whatever the death limit is. So just for best practice, do at least 600 um, Satoshis to pay the different addresses. That way we can make sure they're actually going to where we want them to. So I'll jump into my multi-send example here in HTML. So again, same stuff, except in the header, I have the multi-send text. We have our private key, which is the same. Now notice in our transaction object, it's a little bit more complex. It's the same where we have safe set to true. Data is getting our message. We have the key here, but also now we have this two where we say, okay, I have an address that I got from my money button. I'm going to pay that 600 Satoshis. I have an address that I got from a Simply Cash wallet that I have, and we're going to give it 600 Satoshis, and then an address from my real Memo SV account. So let me go over that real quick. So notice that this address right here, and I have 1,200 Satoshis as of shooting this video, that matches this address right here. So I'm going to pay to three different wallets with the click of a button using this data pay library. Let me just demonstrate. So let me refresh my money button account. So you can see the latest was a debit of one cent when I funded that simple cash wallet. So if I were to fetch an address, I could get one, a, a new one here where I just click add money and then copy the clipboard. And then I can just paste that into here. But I did this before with an old address, which I'm going to fund with 600. All right. So we're going to go into it. Here's our multi send example. So I'll do multi send test on data pay. And I'll click submit. And we get a transaction. So let me copy this. I'm going to go to what's on chain. I'll paste it in. All right, we can see our text in the block explorer, and then we can see that I paid three different addresses, the same that I had in my code, 600 Satoshis. And then the change went back to my uh, address associated with my private key. All right, so let's go to my money button. So we can see it, it already popped up in here, 600 Satoshis. If I hit transaction, it brings me back to the exact same one. All right. And then if I go to my memo profile, I'll refresh, and now I have 1,800 Satoshis in here. And then you guys won't be able to see this, but if I go into my Simply Cash wallet on my mobile phone, I have a notification for that new transaction, which is the same as what I just showed you guys. So... Uh, that's what I really wanted to cover. There's some other functions in here that are outside of the scope of this video, but I think they're kind of self-explanatory. But I think the primary useful ones are the two and uh, specifying the private key and building out the object. So I encourage people to go out here onto the GitHub, create their HTML file, and just start playing with this stuff. I think this is super easy and hopefully can kind of send people down the rabbit hole of Bitcoin SV development and motivate them to start building their own apps. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. You can reach out to me on Twitter, the comment section of this YouTube video, on Twitch, Slack, wherever. I'm open to questions and happy to answer anything. And also, um, I'm curious to learn about what other type of content you'd like to see me put out there. If these tutorials are helpful, if we want to cover some more stuff, um, I'm open to all that. So thank you again, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.